our uh, panel discussion very quickly, which will talk about content marketing, staying relevant, sensitive, and true in current times. How to create content without overdoing the COVID-19. Purpose-driven content marketing is actually the need of the hour. So how do brands stay relevant in time of crisis? These are some of the questions that our panel will discuss and uh, Mr. Bhanja will be uh, chairing the session. So I'd request you to please stay online, sir. While I introduce our panelists for the discussion, Mr. Sharad Somani, Head Marketing South Asia and Indochina Western Union. Very warm welcome, sir. Our next panel is Sudhan Shunakpal, Head Biscuits Category, Mondelez India Private Limited. Warm welcome to you too. Hi, everyone. Hi. I'd like to welcome Neliswa Nukani, Hub Head, Middle East, India, Southeast Asia, South African Tourism. Warm welcome to you. Thank you, Molweni. Um, namaste to all of us, to all of you. Namaste to you too. Krishna Rao, Senior Category Head, Parley Products. Welcome to you too, sir. Hi, hi. Thank you so much. Hello, everyone. And namaste. <laughs> And last but not the least, Mr. Ajay Mehta, Senior Vice President, Content Plus uh, and Mindshare. I'm sorry, we have another panelist, which is Ms. Aditi Srivastava, co-founder, Pocket Aces. So a warm welcome to all of you. Hi, everyone. Hello. Hello. Hi, hi guys. Good to be here. Thank you. Hi. Yeah, all of you are here and our viewers are waiting to hear this very important discussion that we have in store for everybody. So Mr. Bhanja, I'd like you to take the discussion forward. Sure, lovely. Thank you very much, Hedwig. Uh, I think all of us are people who are interested and actively engaged in content marketing. And in these times, uh, there is a natural tendency, as you know, I was also sharing, to jump onto the brand wagon and do therefore something which is very, very actively, overtly, this is COVID and this is how you should uh, deal with this. How have each of you, it would be wonderful to know from each of you, how have you try to use the context without overplaying the context. And that's something that uh, is therefore keeping the background and, there, and not yet making it just all about COVID. And uh, we could start with it uh, alphabetically or in whichever way you want. Aditi, in either way, uh, you'd be the first panelist we'd go to and hear from you. Great. Uh, thank you so much, Shantanu, and a really good presentation. Um, good to be here with everyone. So, you know, this is a really good question. And uh, I think going into the lockdown, um, you know, we were doing a lot of planning on the content front with our writers in terms of how do we change around the scripts, uh, right, that, of the content that we have planned for the time being. So not only was it how do we change around uh, to shoot differently, because obviously that's a reality that we're all living in, uh, in terms of production, but also how do we change around to be more empathetic with what people are currently going through. Um, right. So it was not only that we have to uh, talk about the lockdown or talk about the precautions people are taking. We did that kind of stuff too. Uh, so uh, with YouTube and with Facebook, we ran uh, some campaigns on precautions that people have to take and uh, protect themselves, etc. But uh, the bigger emphasis was on if life for our audience members has changed and our content is always relatable, how can we relate to how they're operating and feeling at this time and what they're going through? Um, so we would continue to tell the stories uh, as it is. So if we were telling the stories of how people are working from home or studying at home or how people are dating, um, there would just, the lockdown would be more of a reality in terms of a background and a backdrop. Uh, to the detailing of the stories, but the end of the at the end of the day, the stories are similar life everyday life stories that we tell on our channels of Filter Copy, Dice Media, Google, etc. That's great. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Ajay, coming to you alphabetically in a way, uh, tell us uh, what your thoughts are. You have been working with multiple clients, I'm sure. Yeah. At this time, how do they uh, pick it up? Yeah. So I. I how do you advise them? Yeah, I quite agree with actually Aditi and what she said in terms of the production and the the challenges we're facing currently in terms of shoots, etc. But what has what has also happened is that uh, it's opened a whole new sort of opportunity for 
doing a lot of work through influencers. I mean, that's a, a huge sort of a spike we've seen in the last two months. And maybe Aditi also might agree to that because she's in a similar sort of a business line. But uh, a lot of the work that's coming out is, you know, home produced, self shot sort of videos, uh, you know, content that we don't have an op- you know, option to, to go out there and shoot. But, uh, and you know, the good thing is the brands are understanding that problem. They, they get that the quality is going to be not top notch, you know. Uh, so that's more from a, from a production, from an execution standpoint. But uh, what we've also seen is there are a lot of stories floating around uh, on social. Like if you look at what people are saying, you know, the opinions, uh, you know, real life stories. I think there's a lot of content that brands can actually latch on to and, and create engaging sort of conversations uh, with their audiences. And, uh, and uh, yeah, just to sum it up, uh, uh, we've seen a huge traction, uh, especially on social, yeah. So while there's a lot of work that's happening on television as well, on news channels, but primarily all the work that we've done uh, is mainly on the social space. Wonderful, wonderful. Krishna Rao, any uh, thoughts on you to build on this? Yeah, so I I quite agree actually. So uh, in the times where uh, uh, creating content or going, uh, uh, production is a challenge, is where we were also contemplating as to uh, what is to be done. And uh, as we had a, a, a discussion with our creative partners, uh, that is when we sort of uh, came up with an idea of uh, uh, actually creating a mashup of all our previously shot uh, high resolution advertisements. And, uh, and we thought of weaving them all together and stitching them together to, uh, to talk about the current uh, situation. So where we talked about like, uh, let's catch up with life. And I think uh, uh, that that uh, actually, honestly speaking, that was predominantly uh, conceived and made for uh, only digital. But uh, uh, as, we, as we really found it to be uh, very, very good content is when we felt, why don't we put this on uh, television as well? And, uh, and I think... Uh, I think we ensured that it is. It was not really very, very overt yet to the point, uh, uh, and actually uh, telling all our consumers uh, that this is the time to actually catch up with uh, your near and dear ones. This was a really good time, and uh, yeah. So that's how we sort of uh, 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 ensured that it was not really out of uh, context uh, completely. Correct. Correct. Mm-hmm. Nelisa, how how would you have used this time? as a backdrop uh, rather than as a core content itself. Anything you want to share? You're on mute, Nelson. Thank you. This is very, this is quite trying times for us. Um, so we're quite a, um, an emotive brand. Travel is very emotional. It's very people. Um, as the first case in South Africa landed, believe it or not, we had, South Africa, we had um, a group of Indian um, two operators that I was hosting. We center our belief as a, as, a, as a country, as a destination, on what we say, umtu gumtu gabantu. In English, translated loosely, we are who we are because of others. So when this happened, it allowed us to literally stop, pause, reach to our inner sense, and then say, what is the change that we are coming, that's coming? We were in the middle of launching a campaign. We took our funding and we put firstly South Africans, not because Indians come second. We took our budgets and we gave it to the small medium enterprises. All of it globally as a destination. Secondly, we realized the consumer is key. There is going to be agitation. There is going to be fear there is going to be panic. And we regrouped together with our strategic partners and said, we need to understand the thought process fast. We need to be um, responsive. We need to be diligent. We need to stop with the selling and we need to stop the opulence of saying we are the, and say, who are we? What can we add to your, how can we address your agitation, your fears? so that we understand the evolving expectation that's going to come out of it. So we then decided digital is the platform, no overkill in terms of advertising. We started talking to our consumer. We started talking to our partner. Once you talk to people 
and reach them on a core level, you, you, it's, it's better. We removed the sales and beneficiation for humanity and Ubuntu. Wonderful, wonderful. Coming to uh, Sharad, yours is a, a slightly, let us move to a slightly different aspect of this. And it's very, very troubling times for many people. Uh, many of them didn't know. People were stuck in different places. And, you know, uh, Western Union has a lot about people sending money to the people they love elsewhere. And how important in this context did you think empathy was? And how do brands work to it? And that will be a question wonderfully uh, appropriate for Sudanshu as well, a brand which is built completely on uh, consumer empathy. Yeah. Sure, and I guess, yeah. Uh, Shantanu, I guess it's a good segue and, and, and connect with the brand. I mean, so as a brand, I mean, uh, we are a 170 year old brand. We are among the top first 10 brands which were ever listed on the New York Stock Exchange. So you're absolutely right. I mean, uh, purpose is built into the DNA of our uh, our brand. And, and, and uh, at the core of it, I mean, we exist because people move. And if we look at it from that perspective, I mean, uh, this whole... Uh, I would say the pandemic actually had put into question mark uh, the, the core purpose of the business itself. But at the same time, I mean, we are a service business, like unlike, uh, I mean, product uh, product kind of brands, which sort of, I mean, almost stopped operating. I mean, for, for, for a brand like us, it was even more important to be relevant to the customers at this point of time and to ensure that we were still available to provide our services to them. But could we provide service to services to them in the same way that we were doing before? Probably not, because even our retail footprint was closed. So what we did, I mean, uh, from from consciously as a brand uh, perspective, I mean, while from the CSR activity perspective, we had a lot of things around COVID, but when it came to brand related messaging, we stayed away from references uh, to COVID, uh, I would say directly, but we rather focused on what customer wants during this uh, time. Right, while pandemic is there, but still there is a need for the customer to send money. I mean, there are, I mean, families uh, survive on the money which is being sent to them Absolutely. during these times. So, so what we did, I mean, we essentially launched a lot of uh, content which was around the services as well, which were specific uh, during this time. So we saw a huge traction, uh, for example, for our digital services where people didn't have to move out of their home and, and they could just send money Sitting from their sitting from their home, so our content actually changed around that. I mean, while our visuals used to be uh, around people moving, I mean, moving around with a with a with let's say mobile in their hand or anywhere. I mean, our communication used to be wherever you are, you can still send money. That changed to send money from the comfort of your home, because that's what was relevant at this point of uh, uh, time, right? And then from the visuals perspective, I mean, as a brand, uh, given that we operate in so many countries, so we never, I mean, never had too much of live, I would say, photography or visuals as part of our of our platform. We always have illustrations as part of our platform. So that helped us mm -hmm. a lot in this time as well because illustrations we could still work with during these trying times uh, uh, trying times as well. Uh, well then we, we launched a lot of services. Like I said, I mean, um, in, in Sri Lanka, for example, we launched the home delivery service because the, there was a lockdown. Customer could not get out of their home. So we said, no, no problem. We will reach out to you. We will ensure that uh, money will reach you. Although, I mean, uh, I mean, you would not be able to walk into our uh, location. In, in some of other markets, for example, in Thailand, we launched something we call as a digital location. Uh, so uh, the whole, uh, again, I mean, the whole concept there was that, I mean, you have to actually do a physical KYC every time you receive our money. Uh, but since uh, even there was a lockdown in Thailand until let's say two weeks back, 17th was when it was relaxed there. So we said to them that no worries. I mean, you call us, provide us your KYC documents uh, uh, digitally, right? And uh, we will transfer money directly into their your bank account rather than, I mean, you pick, coming and picking it up in cash. So all in all, I mean, our content was more around the fact what is the customer need at this point of time? Because we cannot shut okay. down. We need to be open. And we need to continue to provide our services to them. So we launched a lot of services and our entire content from the brand perspective was revolving around that. I mean, as a brand, I, I would say I would have worked in this two months more than I would probably would have worked last two <laughs> years, given the space that we are in. Yeah, I think all of us can relate to that. And I think what you, one of the things we'll come back to, which you mentioned, is 
you adapted both the content and the products to the context Absolutely. and you chose the right content and the product and the two have to work together sudhanshu over to you yeah. with a hugely emotive brand uh, which we all consumed a lot of to side our to you know uh, sort of drown our sorrows in these times Absolutely. tell us i think i i fully resonate with everyone what they have said so far and especially what uh, sharad and alispa was talking about i think it it boils down to you know the debate is interesting one whether brand should use covid as a as a means to you know, repurpose their messaging or not i think it boils down to the fact you know is there a unique point of view or is there a unique role which you can play to create a little bit more meaning and value in consumer life i think if answer is yes then you should because you know at the end of the day brands you know what we offer what we say is in the service of meeting consumer needs you know we can't operate in silos and if our messaging and our offer is not in sync with the changing reality i think we will we will not succeed so it's important to ask yourself a question you know whether you as a brand we have some unique point of view or a unique offering which we can provide which can add value to consumer so it boils down to go back to consumer and what what's happening with their life i think the second filter which is also very critical i believe and the way we are thinking about for our brand you know, whatever we do needs to be consistent with what your brand core dna is you know what you stand Absolutely. for you know so it's it's a kind of you know you need to find an overlap you know what your brand stands for what's your core dna what's your consumer today needs and is there a is there a meaningful value you can create i think that's that's how there are two filters to it the way we are thinking about it and if yes if the answer is yes then we should definitely uh, go ahead and participate i mean i'll give you some example you know from mondley's portfolio today uh, three brands you know very different uh, you know core purpose very different the way they are repurposing campaigns so cadbury dairy milk you know it's a brand which you know, it's one of the most trusted brand in the country you know stands for i mean generosity is the proposition which brand has been propagating for last two years you know which is about celebrating the goodness within now in times of this crisis the whole aspect about you know there are heroes around us who are fighting this battle you know there are heroes which are making sure that our day to day life are going on you know and as a brand you know we came up with a campaign which is a thank you campaign where the brand has really you know changed the brand name instead of a dairy milk we have put thank you on the brand packaging and that too in seven eight different languages i think it's it's in the pursuit of creating value i mean there is positivity required and brand you know people are seeking that and can brand be that change agent and i mean that's one example how it's manifesting on the other hand if you look at five star you know, which is a little more cool huge centric uh, more a little irreverent and the whole proposition has been around do nothing now that's a very you know wacky proposition only youth can relate to people like us might yes. be what is it i mean they pivoted and came up with do nothing outside challenge so very interestingly they pivot their campaign and their what they stand for and in in the spirit of creating meaning in the current context and again you know brand curated a lot of uh, you know light fun content with use of influencers and uh, retain the whole persona which five star stand for so i think there is an interesting balance to be struck strike here i mean if brand doesn't have a unique point of view which can create value then probably it's better to stay away from uh, jumping into because i think it can also do damage to brand yes. if there is no I think it's, a, a, it's a very good point and it actually sort of allows us to segue back to aditya and ajay who interact with many brands how do you tell some of your clients that uh, you know if you were to do something do it if you have something different to say something relatable and relevant now to say much like sudanshu was saying yeah uh, have something relevant then you engage now or else no point this is not the best of times to engage or how do you help them uh, discuss uh, discover that uh, unique uh, situation either of you and then both of you yeah. aditi you want to go first uh you can go first or i can either way is fine you go first okay cool so um, you know it was interesting um, shantanu i'm 
and Ajay can add, in the beginning of the whole lockdown situation, we were seeing actually brands being extremely conservative. Uh, and of course, you know, taking a step back and just evaluating, you know, how this whole thing is unfolding and um, what's actually happening on the ground, how it will affect sales, their distribution, you know, uh, you know, all, all sensible things. And so for, I think our role at that time as like their content kind of advisors and people who uh, enable them to connect with the end audience was just telling them what the audience is thinking, feeling and telling us, right? So, I mean, we reach about 50 million people on a weekly basis and we're talking to them, right? In comments, we're talking to them in DMs. And so basically our role was more reflecting what their audiences are going through and what they're saying. And uh, I think that uh, they were very clear upfront that sales in hi hona hai is time. Pe. I think everyone was very clear ki we should not look ad like, we should not look like Sharad and Sudhanshu rightly said, like we're taking advantage of the situation, right? Um, at, at this time. And so um, for us, it was kind of walking them through the entire process about how could we get their messaging um, also you know, sort of repurpose the messaging like Sudhanshu was talking about to suit this time uh, to the audiences. So that was basically, you know, how it was in the beginning. I think now a lot of brands have gotten very comfortable, um, you know, with, they also have their plans, what they want to do. They have their Q1, Q2 plans, and they've gotten very comfortable with what their stance is. Uh, during the lockdown. Uh, I think a few of them have gotten bold as well. We also have brands who are saying, um, rightly as Sudhanshu said, that you know we can continue with our own messaging, our original messaging, as long as it's being empathetic to the current scenario, but we are not changing the messaging. So I think this was, I think authenticity and empathy are the main things that the audience is really, really appreciating right now. And also like you talked about, you know, the whole um, craft campaign, UGC is a big thing right now because people have time, they're at home, right? So we also encourage a lot of brands to try the UGC route, which, which uh, otherwise would not have. And one of the big positives was that, you know, decision making was actually much faster in this COVID period than it has ever been. Like even when we were working with brands, uh, for example, we did a campaign with uh, Bumble and actually Cadbury Dairy Milk Silk um, together. And uh, we created a whole series from start to end during the lockdown. It's called First. We created a season two for it. And uh, Bumble permissions, uh, you know, go ahead from the headquarters came in record time, right? It's just things are much faster. Brands are also a lot more open right now to tell us, okay, this is the monies we have to spend. So let's build a full plan together. These kind of things are not very common. They don't, uh, you know, volunteer this kind of information in usual times. But I think one brand, one CMO said it really well in one of my meetings. He said, Abhi, CMO, brand manager, or agency, or creator ke beach, koi difference nahi hai. We are all working so closely together to, to really encourage people and win this. Right? So I think that Again, was... Again, fantastic point and I'm sure we'll come back to it. A lot of brand decisions were taken on screens like this. Yeah. Five, six uh, brand managers, CMOs, uh, uh, agencies, creator, content creators coming together. And suddenly there is no hierarchy. You're all a box uh, and you're all willing to share. You're all driven by one particular uh, goal. And then you just make it happen. You think while you are stuck in that box, you are thinking out of the box and making things happen. And yeah. It was, I think for many of us, really uh, big experiences. Sorry, Ajay. Yeah, so no, I, I agree with uh, what Sharad said and even uh, Sudhanshu and in some parts, everyone is speaking about that. See, there's this whole language that we keep saying brand do versus brand speak, right? Uh, I mean, we hear it, I, you know, with Unilever, when you work with them, it's time and again, you keep hearing that from a purpose lens. Yeah, I think this is the right time for brands to actually get out there and, and drive their proposition and their space in a manner where they don't come across as opportunistic, right? Because uh, there are some pieces of work that we've seen recently, which, which you'll be like, wow, you know, why would they do that? But uh, the more and more I see and what Aditi mentioned, in the first part of uh, COVID, we did see brands saying, you know, the whole sentiment of budget cuts, etc. I mean, uh, that's a reality. But uh, they have come around and said that let's engage with our audience in, in a manner that we should. So whether it's 
you know, a, a brand like Brew talking about Dalgona coffee and riding that wave on social or whether it's Lifeboy, you know, latching on a TikTok and, and you know, doing a hand wash sort of a challenge. So I think there are ways and means have opened up uh, in terms of reaching out to the audience uh, without seeming very, like I said, opportunistic. Uh, but yeah, I mean, a lot of brands are coming forward now and saying that uh, let's get on to social, let's try and do something, let's try and reach out to them and be relevant uh, in these times without, you know, trying to be too pushy uh, or seem like trying to sell something. For example, we also, we moved the needle from digital to a, like I think uh, Sudhan Shua, Sharad mentioned about the whole on-ground piece. How do we reach out to the guy and actually deliver our products? You know, in times like this where migrant workers are actually heading back and there's a huge issue in the whole supply chain and distribution uh, uh, current scenario, we've actually given a solution where we've built, and you would have heard ITC on wheels and even I think Cadbury is doing something. At yeah. the end. I mean, you keep seeing that on Instagram. But we've done something where we're now managing to actually deliver uh, products directly to the societies. You know, so it's an RWA sort of a model. Uh, you have an app that's built in and we reach out to the secretary of the building. Uh, and even that's something that we built. Uh, so the branding is secondary. The primary motive is let's go out there and reach out to consumers and at least, you know, uh, let them know that we care in some form or the other. So I think all brands, if you look at it, are trying to do that. Some are getting it right. There are some examples which were quite, uh, you know, in that sense, I was quite appalled in seeing what they were doing. But, but yeah, there is, there is opportunity in this, in this sort of a scenario as well. Lovely. Yeah. Uh, Krishna Rao, anything uh, you wanted to share about uh, how the brand empathy piece is very relevant and you all also have done some good work uh, at this time. So if there's something that you'd like to share. Absolutely. So, so uh, as far as um, uh, the lockdown is concerned, so actually, uh, we we were actually stuck for the first uh, uh, since since the Janta curfew, and uh, 22nd, 23rd, 24th, and that is when we felt okay. I think before we do anything, I think we this is the time for us to give something to the society, and that is when we sort of uh, made an announcement of giving uh, uh, three crore parleji packets uh, to the to the health workers, to the needy, to the to the hospitals, etc. Through government channels yeah. and i think that sort of uh, uh, really created a very very uh, positive uh, environment and actually that sort of also motivated the entire channel i would say within and outside so right from our vendors to our our, our factories to our uh, cnfs to our uh, wholesalers distributors uh, to our, most importantly our own uh, staff actually and and uh, there was no sort of uh, uh, going back from there on uh, yeah, as far as uh, say, so one more instance I would want to say sort of uh, 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 highlight here was uh, when, uh, uh, yeah, so, so everyone's been saying that, okay, uh, it should not be really uh, uh, seeming to be very, very opportunistic. But at the same time, it's not that we've, uh, uh, we've been communicating uh, this uh, for the first time. Uh, generally, we've been talking like, you no, know, Palaji has been Hindustan ki taqat kind of a, a, a communication and uh, the, the moment uh, uh, th there was this announcement by uh, the, the prime minister talking about how, how do we promote uh, the local brands is when actually it took barely for our teams actually to spring into action and in about uh, barely half an hour 8 30 the speech was over by by about 8 45 9 o'clock we had already content ready which talked about swadeshi and uh, and and which which talked about uh, 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 like you know so made in india for india etc and there was so many uh, content pieces created and uh, uh, which which were really uh, like you no know, we have a brand called 2020 and even for that like you know 20 20 20, 20 lakh crores Again, there was a very, very uh, good sync, and I think it was it was seamless and it was very well accepted actually across uh, across uh, mediums. I would say. Wonderful, wonderful. Nelisha, if we moved on to ask you, what was one biggest learning uh, for you in this entire period? Or what is? I mean, it's a continuing phase for most of us. What is that biggest learning that you have taken out? in the content marketing space that you'd like to share for all our listeners? So, travel, one of the things about travel compared to, if you compare it to Cadbury or um, any consumable brand, uh, travel is about humans. It's about human touch. It's about um, 
human engagement. It's about bringing people together. We learned very quickly and very fast that there needs to be a balance between technology and the human touch. Um, we had to learn to, to bring in technology within the human space. Um, we also learned very quickly that silence is an amazing thing because you don't always have to talk. Um, but most important as well was the key of bringing local content, localizing content and ethical marketing. Ethical marketing became the centerpiece because we, we talk about brand, we talk about marketing, the, the dictionary of marketing is now has to change. You know, we talk about brand essence, we talk about um, brand health, we talk about the brand, we talk about sustainable marketing. I think one key that we're going to have to unpack is ethical marketing. But the greatest one for us is when we decided we have to trigger the response because in the beginning was anxiety, came boredom, came I need to continue with life, came with I don't have much, but I need to do and achieve the thing that I dream of. And we brought in virtual tourism. We then learned that the virtual tourism was for us, was an, it, was a, it, it was amazing. It was actually perplexing because we found people paying to go on a virtual safari just to fulfill the yearning of I am going to get there. Now you can imagine in this day and time, a pups and a mom's paying $45 to go on a safari through a television, unpacking the footprints of an elephant, watching an elephant give birth, watching a live kill, and you're paying for it. So for me, it says, we people sitting on this platform need an awakening that in some, at some point, <laughs> where do we find the balance of, I need to be there physically, and I can do it without being there physically? And how do we become ethical to our brand and to sustain the consumer without having to be patronizing and optimistic? Fantastic words. I think that's uh, therefore a question that I can, we can move on to and taking inputs from all the other panelists. Uh, and we can go to Sharad and uh, take his thoughts on one biggest learning, maybe through one initiative we've done or any other way or seeing other people, other brands, what is that one single largest learning uh, in the sphere of content marketing that we have taken out? Well, I mean, like I said, uh, while I was talking about the previous question, like, I mean, for first for us, uh, the whole thought process during this time was that, I mean, if we, if, if we connect with the consumer through their needs, then, uh, then rather through a COVID-related communication, I mean, they would, they would, in, I mean, in, in turn, would work with us and provide the content that we that we would require. I'll give one particular example to illustrate uh, uh, illustrate this. So, uh, first of May, as we all know, is Labor Day, right? In this COVID kind of environment, probably we all have forgotten about uh, it. But I mean, we uh, given that I mean, our <coughs> core. I would say businesses around migrants and migrants sending money back home yes. to India, Sri Lanka, wherever. I mean, so that becomes, I would say, critical to our uh, our objectives, uh, uh, so to say, right? And the, the, we, any which ways, do I mean things uh, around those uh, periods? But uh, during during this first of first of May, uh, and then the, I mean, this is a specific campaign that we did in, in in Singapore. In Singapore, at this point of time, most of the COVID cases. Uh, are, are not coming from the mainstream audiences. Most of the cases are restricted to the dormitories where the migrant uh, uh, workers are staying at this point of uh, time. And first of labor is about those migrant uh, uh, workers and all. I mean, so for us, I mean, there are very few brands like us who are actually o open at this point of time who are providing service because they are an essential service. So even there, while most of the other businesses are closed, we are not allowed to operate, if I can say so, right? So what... <laughs> I mean, for us, the best way, like I said, was to to connect with the consumer is to give them what they need at this point of time. We launched a campaign saying that for a one month period between 1st of May to 30th, 31st of May for every, I mean, every time they do a transaction with us, they don't have to pay any fee. 
uh, we will do it free of cost to um, free of cost for us whatever the channel uh, might be whether they want to visit a location or want to do it uh, directly with us at the same time <coughs> we are also uh, working uh, together with our CSA team and, 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 and seeing how can we help them with their basic uh, necessities in terms of food packets and, and things like that. But we typically I would, would do, do not promote that part of our um, activation um, ever. But uh, what we saw, I mean, since both of this are parallel, there is a brand campaign, there is a CSR campaign running in, in, in parallel at the same time, one which is being promoted, other uh, which is being run just because that is not something which we would want to promote about it. But like someone was saying, Aditi, I think uh, this is the time when people are idle, right? So uh, what we saw without we actually doing anything, I mean, there are videos after videos of people, uh, I mean, putting it up on uh, Facebook, on Insta, on TikToks, that how Western Union is helping them uh, during this uh, time by providing them those uh, food packets, by providing them clothes and, and things like uh, things like that right so without we actually creating the content uh, it, it 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 became viral on so many uh, platforms i mean of course we <laughs> we kept it there we we were completely away from it but uh, it it was the consumers themselves who were promoting us during those uh, times so all in all i mean to mm -hmm. summarize it was about i mean if you if you do what your consumers want they will come and stay behind you indeed so don't you uh, how do you like to add your learning and any specific uh, example that you wanted to add further to what you say yeah i think at an overarching level one one very interesting piece you know one of our leaders spoke about it you know there are no holy cows anymore you know everything is up for change you know and this crisis has kind of uh, opened up everything you know how we think about doing business building brands uh, you know distribution everything so I think that's the one overarching you know, piece uh, which we are keeping in mind. You know, we need to get more agile. You know, the whole change agility and how do you test, learn, adapt. You know, we don't know how future is going to be. So overarching, that's one theme which we are trying to build, you know, getting comfortable with. I think particularly to content marketing, a you know, few things which uh, we did, you know, which uh, we believe are the, you know, for example, you know, Ajay spoke about uh, you know, telling versus doing. You know, yeah. For the first time, I, I think we are we are also realizing you know the old ways of brand building, which is you know you create some message and put it out there and then you know it invest behind it, is not the future. So you need to you know build brands based on doing. And how do you think about that differently? Is something which I think is one learning. You know. Uh, Aditi spoke about user-generated content. I think that's another piece which we are realizing. You know, is this the powerful space? You know, this uh, crisis, we launched uh, you know, what we are calling "At Home with Oreo" campaign, which was all about uh, creating content which users can use to create playful moments in their home as they are spending more and more time. And one of the big pillar was recipes on that. And you know, by I mean, I must say the way that campaign has created results and one of the numbers I will just quote and we found that a couple of days back your know, top 20 YouTube videos on Oreo recipes have gathered close to 2.5 CR views in last 45 days I mean it's more than what, what we could have gathered by investing so I think user generated how do you trigger user generated content as a way of building brand uh, by doing and not just telling I think is a big one, and one Wonderful. which 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 is a very exciting one, which my our agency partners are not very happy. I think you know the way you know content is getting generated remotely, and good quality content uh, at a much cheaper cost, at a much faster pace. I think the benchmarks are being set, the new normal. So I think how we think about uh, your production when it comes to content marketing, I think this crisis is throwing new ways of working, which can be meaningful going forward. I think fantastic. And I did smiling when you say that. Yes, I, I, I saw smiles all the way, all the way around. <laughs> Creative agencies won't be happy because you'll ask for a film for 15 lakhs. But uh, yeah, I guess. Absolutely. 15 lakhs, that's a lot. That's a reason to smile. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah no. 15 lakhs is a lot now. <laughs> Consumers do it for us. No, but joking yeah. apart, there was a question that came up also in, in from some of the uh, uh, this thing, people who are attending. 
uh, how do we see marketing being changed permanently forever what are some of the residual impacts of uh, our learnings in this period and if anyone has a quick thought to share uh, sudanshu already started it off uh, by saying yes uh, production costs etc will always uh, bring a smile now uh, because there is a different very different benchmark uh, uh, ajay aditi your answers with your smiles tell us a few so yeah and so i i think they're going to be uh, i mean i don't know what's going to be done in the future but these conversations are opening up right i mean we're hearing yeah. that Uh, like he said, good quality production, decent production. Like if you see, I saw Karan Johar video for Godrej that he's done like two days back or three days back. That's he's done it pretty well. You know, I mean, it's he's dyed his hair and he's talk, spoken about the product. And I mean, that's as good as a film. You know, you would actually get him in a studio and shoot him and spend like fifty lakhs plus to get him into a TV series. What he's done done at home on his own, I'm assuming, is fantastic. Yeah. So so it's you know the ideas. can come from anywhere i mean uh, today when you enter any client uh, brainstorming sessions uh, we know for a fact that uh, it's it, it can come many agency it could be a pr agency creative agency media agency content agency influencer agency they are all sitting there in that room and they have all the options to choose from but i think going forward there will be pressure there will be pressure to deliver in uh, in the kind of cost that we've been given because there are budgets dropping uh pressure on delivering in 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 uh, in lower cost higher production that's going to be another big sort of a question which i think is going to be burdening for creative agencies for sure because the yep. real pressure comes on to them to cut down their you know the rates and margins and stuff but uh, see you mentioned about learnings uh, you know so shantun i think everyone yep. touched upon that in some form or the other i think i read an article this morning that people are thrashing the government saying that especially the maharashtra government saying that they're not doing enough for the for the migrant workers and people are falling ill they are passing out or you know on the way back but i think the great thing is that look at the number of brands that have come forward here you know they've it's not because they've taken opportunity to come and sell or promote themselves in this form but like you said you know the distribution of the biscuits or uh, you know just bringing a smile by sending a cadbury chocolate to my house uh, or any other form whether it's a truck on the on, at your at your doorstep i think there are so many beautiful ways for the brand to engage and and, and spread the joy in, in times like these so that's been a big learning you know it's not only about just putting out a post or a video on social or tv you so have to do something for the audience and for your consumers well then you know this is like the memory structure this will stay with me forever you know i mean i'll what will what will stay with me in these times will be uh, for a very long time you know so yeah yes Are they just, saying something? Yeah. yeah, you know, I was smiling earlier because it's like I'm so glad to hear these kind of things coming from brands, right? So I think uh, you know, on digital, it's always been like uh, you know, economies of scale and super, super efficient production. You know, when you put out, uh, you know, uh, when you put content out on social. um you know and you you wanted to spread organically right and this is been something we've been preaching for like 5 years that you don't have to buy views you know it has to be super authentic so that people share it and you get huge amount of engagement that way and that that results in real roi right real conversions whether it is to a website or app downloads or even you know kind of buying a physical product on the ground so i think it's uh, further efficiencies we have all learned to even do in large products right so for example when we used to have web series sets with you know say 70 people today we have a plan that as soon as lockdown opens with 30 people i can go and shoot like a full web series about 100 100 minutes of content right so i think 100% agree of driving efficiencies and actually better media value uh, because there's organic highly engaged views right i Absolutely. think the 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 another angle i would just like to add agree with everything that has been said so far is that people are getting uh, brands are getting more uh, experimental with different genres of content uh, because though some of those genres are actually easier to do now slash uh, are getting a lot of eyeballs from the audience so one good example is animation um, right so animation has been affected not at all uh, you, you know during covid and so i think that is something so we've started a new animation channel a few months ago and that is seeing a lot of traction number one number two gaming so gaming and esports is something that has was already you know a big trend last year it's youtube's 
highest growing category and uh, in this last uh, couple of months of lockdown it's you know the growth rate has increased like crazy and we see more and more brands you know and we've done something with oreo on our gaming app loco more and more brands really opening up to these categories infotainment is another one which really hasn't taken off in a big way in india as it has say in the us but now it's actually people are seeing that how they can use infotainment to also drive in messaging so i would say that the efficiencies of scale the uh, the importance of organic uh, performance and the openness to different formats of content these are the positive changes learnings that right we so we we are in the sort of last 2 uh, 3 minutes of this anything that you want to add neliswa which is uh, about a, an abiding learning uh, anything from you krishna on this vocal for local i think you all have done something around that couple of quick snatches uh, just a minute each would be useful anything sharad you would want to add very very quickly krishna rao anything that you would want to I earn you chat. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think yeah. So, so like I said, uh, so, so I think um, the learning. So, so I'm just trying to relate it. What, uh, what you said earlier. How is it going to change? Uh, I think um, so. So, brands' perspective uh, is definitely changing. Say, for example, last year we sort of built a brand, uh, a Rola Cola relaunch actually only on digital. and uh, and that has continued and that has rather gained momentum so i think this gives a lot of confidence to brands actually that this is the way forward so and this is all all this has happened uh, with with uh, changing times i would say so 2016 onwards 4g coming in uh, data becoming getting cheaper etc so people having uh, spending more time on their uh, second screens etc so i think even post covid i think so so because of the efficiencies because of uh, the brands are have realized uh, uh, the 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 pros of of uh, uh, content creation at a lower cost and at a better and possibly they learn as to how to improve further Lovely. quality quality and uh, take it forward sure. melissa anything um so oh, as i said for us for me one of the greatest learnings in this time hope mm -hmm. put consumer in the center everything about them do not take them for granted we have a saying in kosa that says inyawa nampumlo it says your foot does not have a nose therefore you never know where you're going to end up therefore be good to your consumer be good to your distribution channel collaboration 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 take off the competitive hat sometimes and just bring in the human element meaning if you win your consumer's heart and when you instruct them or you advise them and you engage them and says it doesn't have to be now we can do it together later and once you can win that con win that conviction give them that conviction they will come back and they'll come back for more fantastic i think we can't possibly end better than that message the consumer is at the center win the consumer heart that's really all that matters the business can come tomorrow the little bit of sales fees can come later uh, i think that is at the center of content marketing and that's really all all of us have learned that the most i think couple of things additionally that we've all learned is speed is responsiveness it's about being authentic it's about being relevant this is really uh, i think from the discussion that we all had in the examples we shared where really what brings together a great uh, uh, content marketing 101 if you were to do this at these times thank you all uh, for fantastic uh, sharing with lot of learnings well so we have to get those uh, quotes from you later because those were fantastic words and we just need to know it in the authentic spelling and so on we will request uh, michelle to get that back to us really lovely sharing from everyone and uh, rich rich uh, uh, this thing uh, content that we discussed itself thank you all very much oh, absolutely you so much thank you just for staying on time yes, thank you all very much bye bye
if the time permits to some of you at least we have a lot of questions that have come out in our q a box and if some few can answer a few of them before uh, moving out i we understand would love to. we had a sort of drop dead time at 3:15 so we were making sure we were closing out to that we have no, we do have we do have another more. 5 minutes or so to take these questions so if time permits for the rest of the speakers if it's okay for the panelists we can i'm sure happily would love to address some of those questions yeah i, I, I didn't to, get that I message earlier off, sorry for that yeah so yeah. i'm open yeah but thanks very much sudanshu and ajay we will meet you up later better. with you all soon yeah. thank and, you sir uh, thank you wonderful uh, to have you both yeah i think i'm uh, open in minutes to questions i'm happy to take questions <laughs> right lovely one of the questions that was coming up i saw a number of them around was about this vocal about local are there initiatives that we are seeing around content marketing around that is that something that anyone wants to speak about maybe more relevant for aditi to give some examples and krishna rao if you have done something in this space yeah uh yeah krishna why don't you go ahead yeah yeah so uh, like i mentioned so so we we've, we've created quite a bit of uh, content uh, actually and uh, so 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 like i already mentioned examples of parley ji and this was so so uh, so the day the, the night actually uh, the prime minister mentioned about uh, going or or promoting work uh, being very vocal about local brands uh, so so we went all out actually and then the, only the subsequent day actually uh, uh, there was a sort of a clarification because uh, there was there is a very thin divide between what do you mean by vocal for local so so for for everyone's benefit actually so so the the, the intent was actually anything uh, so so there are there are brands which are produced in india and which are very very indian and there are brands which are not necessarily indian yet they have manufacturing setups in india so there are many such brands and uh, so so the, the government the, the entire nation uh, because it all benefits effectively the nation uh, so 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 the the whole idea was to promote brands which are produced in india and uh, uh, so so the the moment uh, this was mentioned we actually thought uh, this was a fantastic opportunity uh, to tell uh, our uh, consumers uh, uh, the the the, space, the 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 sort of legacy the the indianness of our brands while while that is important a bit about like um, say uh, say for example so so vocal for local is very good i think it will definitely promote lot of brands which are produced in india but then at the same time what happens is in certain categories possibly uh, so 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 because of because of there not any significant brand not being in that category uh, becomes a challenging uh, challenging proposition so so for example uh, like cosmetics for example so where, where we do not really have a formidable player or uh, say handbags women handbags so, so we do not really have a, a formidable brand so so ultimately even if you want to buy something indian it's not really available and and if you want to go for a luxury automobile so so upwards of 30 40 50 lakhs you don't really have a choice so that's where sure. we sort of uh, go out uh, Are there anything to add? So interestingly, Shantu, we have not seen a lot of brands, especially wanting to use or leverage this uh, vocal for local for in you know in their brand market marketing during this time correct. yet. Correct, correct, correct. We actually haven't seen much of that. So yeah, and I and I think a lot of the sense is that we are brand for who we are rather than just correct. for being uh, where local, we are made exactly. Not sort of a handicap that we need to use it's it's almost if i have a strong brand that's what i want to relate to rather than just being indian is at least till now that's what we have seen perhaps yeah yeah, yeah. and uh, i think the other uh, question that was coming up and aditi you would be a great uh, person to tell us between all of these engagements what should be a benchmark for what it will be the paid versus what would be the uh, natural uh, Organic, driven, organic. Yeah. Uh, this thing driven by authenticity. Any yeah. benchmarks that you would say? Yeah. So um, I think uh, Shantanu, in this case, I mean, what I would say is that it's a ratio, right? So you have to see yeah. as a percentage, um, you know, of what is paid and what is organic. So I think one good way to actually um, 
to actually when, when you see a piece of content to determine how organic it is to look at depending on the platform you're using say i'll give an example of youtube um, you can look at the number of uh, views versus like the comments the like and dislike ratio and things like that so for example if if it's a lot if it's very organic you should have a like to dislike ratio of over 20 and uh, you should have like an engagement rate of at least you know over 2% um i would say i uh, you know and then the way to calculate engagement rate simply would just be comments plus likes minus dislikes divided by views right and mm-hmm. I, and if you see uh, if something is heavily paid then you will see that those numbers will really fall uh, i think at a time like this it's okay to seed right the cpms are really low so there's a very no uh, it's it's very tempting to put money on something uh, and it's okay to seed it as long as you're seeding a piece of content with a little bit of money in the right target audience but once you have done the seeding you need to let it grow organically uh, you you need to design something in a way that those people are going to share or tag somebody or comment or spread it to their friends and um, so in general what we would recommend is it should be 80% organic to get high roi out uh, for your brand uh in terms of the call to action and in terms of the actual um you know uh, residual uh, impact residual impact and, yeah all of these are very useful metrics for any of us who are doing it around the people who are listening many so i think your uh, campaign the south african tourism campaign of going in live caught people's imagination and therefore i saw it in so many of my whatsapp groups for example being shared by people and that's really when you are trying to authentically uh make something available for people that's really something that takes its own legs uh, or gathers its own speed and wind therefore behind the scenes so that great example of that and that reminds us uh, many of us are going to i south africa as a tourism spot as well you uh, really made it exciting for all of us even more today and again now kathy hand it over back to you uh, wonderful sharing from all the panelists i Thank we are really engaging time talking about something you all enjoy very much uh, in an authentic But manner for people sir, who can uh, there is one specific question that has come up uh, which is for neliswa which is about ethical marketing that you spoke about they're saying it's not a small wo- word and thanks for talking about it uh, if every brand rethinks about ethical marketing the consumer would feel better and the world possibly would be a nicer place their specific question is about what is the future of travel and tourism post covid yes oh you know we 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 are in such a um it it's um we're in a precarious situation as travelers i said the other day to an interview that i was addressing that it's a combination um of i am a traveler i am now coming back home to india what i pack in my suitcase that will not endanger just my journey to the airport what do i pack in my suitcase what do i unpack at home when i get back to mumbai and what do i discard that is going to be environmentally friendly the future of south africa so the future for travel is going to be really dependent on what the consumer wants again in labor we have to listen to the consumer understand the thought process I think that and I always make this example between India and South Africa mm-hmm. we are bound by so many commonalities right that we are resilient I think will have to be changes but those changes are going to be consumer driven they're going to be by the distribution channel they're going to be the hotels driven we are going to see a bit of a shift from confined spaces I think people are going to want wide they're going to want natural environment one of the things i picked up from covid 19 if you think about it not one animal hmm. space has been impounded by this disease yeah this is human to human therefore we need to reengage with the natural environment bigger spaces i mean water is going to become very important in terms of the ocean so yes. gone the days where we are going to want to queue up to go up on a compound space um the 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 way we 
consume food, do you want still somebody you don't know who has prepared your food? I think we're going to be very driven by trust. It's going to be very key. I would rather have my husband, my, my, my brother, my sister, who I'm traveling to prepare that food. Um, a lot of um, diverse and different things that are going to come up. Is travel coming? Is it going to happen? I think more than ever. But we've got to be very vigilant and diligent in tailor making what the consumer is. Gone are the days where I sell what I love. It's what the consumer needs and how do I respond and how do I deliver? Right. Absolutely. So so Fantastic. On that note, I think we will end our panel. There are lots of very, very engaging and uh, good discussions. Thanks uh, so much. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Over to you. Thank Kevin. you so Back. much, everyone. Thank you, Shantanu. For, that was some lovely moderation. Thank, thank you, you Shantanu. Thank, thank you, Aditi. Thank Thanks you, Thank you, Krishna. Thank we'll you. We'll connect up with all of you. Thank sure. you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you, Kathy. Thank you. Namaste. Thank you so much, everybody. We love this discussion. Thank you. <laughs> Namaste. <laughs> Namaste thank instead you. of shake hands all the way now. Yes. yes. <laughs> Namaste. <laughs> Namaste. Stay <laughs> blessed. <laughs> So with that, all those who are watching us, I hope this has been a very engaging and interesting panel discussion. I could see in the comments and in the chat box that you guys have loved it. So if you want to talk about it a little more, engage more people out there who possibly haven't seen it yet, do tweet to us using our hashtag E4M webinar and E4M content jam. We would love to hear from you and you can engage with our speakers on Twitter as well. We are live on Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter. So if you drop out for some reason from Zoom, you have other avenues to join us back.